What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for data science. In today's episode we're getting into styling our plots with matplotlib styling. So we're going to learn how to label our plots, how to choose the colors, how to enable uh, specific plotting uh, style features, and basically how to make our plots more beautiful and also more understandable and more readable. So let us get into the code. So I think it's no surprise that we start by importing numpy as np and matplotlib matplotlib.pyplot as plt. But this time we're also going to add a new library which is also from matplotlib and it is from matplotlib import style. So today we're going to do some styling here. And the most basic way to style your plot is to just choose one of the matplotlib styles. So let us first of all define a basic function again. So x equals uh, np dot arrange or a range because it's not a range. Uh, and start from 0 to 200 this time with a step size of 0 0.2. And then we say y equals np. Let's just make a simple sign function and plot it. So plt dot plot x and y and plt.show when we do that we haven't used the style yet so this is just our basic plot of course now what we can do is we can choose a certain style so this is the default style but we can also say um, style dot use and now we can specify a string with a style name for example a classic one is ggplot um, when you run this, you'll see that the whole theme has changed. The whole matplotlib theme has changed. Uh, for example, I mean, the sign function is actually kind of shitty here. Let's just say up until 30 to get a better overview. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a uh, light gray background. We have a white grid. Uh, and this is basically ggplot. It's a different theme. Um, I think another one was 538, if I'm not mistaken right now. Yeah, this one is, for example, you can see that the graph is, uh, the, the thickness of the graph is quite uh, higher. We have a light gray background all over the, the whole plotting window here. Uh, we have a gray grid in the background and also the labels are bigger. So we can choose different styles that are already in matplotlib and to find these styles you can just uh, go to the style sheets reference of matplotlib. I hope I have put a link in the description. Um, but here you can see the different the different um, plotting styles. So this is the default that we already know. Uh, here you have classic, um, then you have solarized light 2, all that. For example, let's let's pick dark background, and you can see that it's really a difference. Dark underlined background. It's another te uh, theme. And you see now we have uh, a black background. So you can choose one of these themes, and you can also make your own theme. So you can just adjust all the different uh, parameters. For example. Uh, what's the font size, what's the background, what's the color of the individual plotting elements, what is, um, uh, for example, uh, do we have a grid or something like that. So all these themes are just uh, examples and there are a lot of them, but they're quite similar. So if you want to have your own customized theme, you might want to do that uh, on your own. So grayscale is another one to look into, kind of interesting grayscale, black and white and gray. Yeah, so it's pretty basic. So this is how you choose a matplotlib styling theme. So now let us get into labeling our plots so that we can understand it better. So we can add some titles, we can add some access labels and so on. But before we do that, I want to show you how to activate or deactivate the grid because some themes have grids, some themes don't have grids. And I think the one we selected right now, Grayscale, doesn't have a grid. So let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have a grid, so we can activate this grid. We can just say plt.grid and we can pass true as a parameter. And then it should have a grid. 
yeah, as you can see. Of course, this grid is kind of confusing right now because it's black on black. Uh, usually you want to choose a light gray or just just a color that's in the background and not really in your face all the time, but this is how you can activate the grid basically. Uh, also, we're not going to use grayscale because we want to work with colors later on. I'm just going to use the default theme. Um, and to now label our plot, we can just start by adding a title. So plt.title, uh, for example, sign, sign function to know what we're plotting. And when I add this and run the script, you'll see that I have the title up here, sign function. Um, also, we can add a super title. So it's written like subtitle, but not with a B. So it's not subtitle, but it's super title. I think it's super, but I don't know why. Uh, what is what the sub is actually for? Uh, but it's uh, the bigger title. It's above the title. So let's just say I am bigger, and it should. Yeah, it's on top of the actual title. So it's the title of the whole figure, basically. Uh, yeah. And what we can also do is we can label the axis. So I want to have, uh, or I want to know what is the x axis and what is the y axis. And in this case, it doesn't make sense because we're actually just calculating the sine function. But what you could do is you could say plt.x label. Uh, if you have a different graph, in this case, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but Let's say we have a number of students and then we can say plt.y label is a height of students. Actually, it doesn't make sense. We should use something like weight of students and then look for a correlation. Um, yeah, in this case, as I said, it doesn't make sense because we have a sine wave, but this is how you label the axis. So you can say this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and I have my labels to know what I'm working with. So last but not least, let us take a look at the legend. So what we can do is we can specify a legend. We can put a legend into our plot so that we know which graph is what. Uh, and to do that, we're going to just uh, define two things here. So y1 would be sine and y2 would be cosine. So we're going to say np.cosine of x. And now we have two different plots. And, or actually we don't have them yet, because we need to plot them. plt.plot x, y2. Uh, and of course, when we run this, you don't see any... Uh, difference except for of course the function itself but if you don't know which one is which one because you're not good at math uh, you don't get any information about that. Uh, actually let's remove all of this here because it's confusing. Uh, what we can now do is we can specify a, a label for this. So we can say a label equals uh, and this one is the sine function or actually let's just call it sine and the second one is cosine. And then what I can do is I can say plt.legend and I have to specify a location uh, in a string. And for example, in this case, I'm going to say upper left. So this should be enough to make it work. Yeah, as you can see in the upper left here, I have my legend, which says sine and cosine, the blue one is the sine, the orange one is the cosine, uh, and now we have a difference, of course. So every time uh, we plot something, we can specify a label, and this label is then used in the legend. Um, so this is how this basically works. Of course, you can also place it on the upper right. I'm not sure what the keyword is for uh, the bottom, but I think it's bottom, so we're going to check it out in a second. Bottom right. Or lower right, I don't know, but I think it's bottom right. Nope, doesn't work. Lower right, maybe. Yeah, lower right. Or center right is also a, a valid location. So this is how you add a legend to your plot.
So that's Matplotlib styling for now. Uh, there are a lot more things to do, for example, background colors and face colors and all that. Uh, but we're going to do these things on the fly, so when we need them, we're just going to use them because I'm going to play around with styles a bit. Uh, but for now, these are the basics. We now know how to label our plots, we know how to uh, add titles, how to make a legend and all that, how to choose a style. Uh, and that's enough for the beginning. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the like button. Also, as always, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.